Actually, that was a song I dedicated to my constituency, Sing Parangam. I hope that was one of the reasons why I won the election. <laughs> but it was not a campaign song. It is a song that I told my constituents that I hope it will last until the end of the day because nobody ever knew there is a place, a rural place called Semparangam in Malaysia. So I promised them that I will put Semparangam in a map of the world. So when we have, <laughs> when we have all the ambassadors here, <laughs> I hope they will spread the news and the name Semparangam to the respected countries. It's a beautiful place which consists of three fell dust, one fell car, two estates, is a rural area and a prison yeah and a prison yeah so if you're talking about a madman talking about Malay tsunami it would be Chintong and I became a second madman to believe in him when I quit UIA I quit my job as a assistant professor at uh, International Islamic University I was asked by my friends or by the press why did I do that said because I believe in Malay tsunami in order to enable Malay tsunami, I must convince the Malay that they can do impossible. <laughs> Gambling is not part of Malay culture. <laughs> I was blessed to be born half Chinese and half Malay. So I'm gambling in a Sharia compliance way. I learned a lot from my Sifu in politics, Chin Dong, who managed to teach me that, you know, in order to bring change to the country, you need to sacrifice. You need to tell, you need to convince the people that they can do miracles, but they need to sacrifice. They need to take risks. Thank you, Chin Dong, for that. And why I joined politics, I will put all the blame to one side full. <laughs> Over a plate of mihun and cups of teh tare, he and Dato Rais from PPBM has managed to persuade, oh no, that is not the nice word to be used, they have managed to not convince, not force, that's too strong, <laughs> lured me to go into politics for this uncertain change that we believe in. And a few days ago, we have managed to change the country. But you know, this change comes with a price. People have, uh, I mean, people have huge expectation on Pakatan Harapan. And looking at the result, they would expect that everything will get in order, I mean, over the night, but definitely it's impossible. You know, reform should take time. But every single day, people are looking at us, mind you, and people keep asking and keep demanding from us. Coming from a rural place called Simparangam, myself, you know, after the the form of new government, or after Tun Dr. Mahdi sworn in, became the, new, the seventh prime minister of Malaysia, my phone kept ringing until this moment. We have problems with our drains. <laughs> my children need some school stuff. You know, we have this, we have that, and my new scores, if not hundreds of calls, asking me, can we have PPBM or Bersatu's form. We are formerly Amno Chawangan, we are formerly Amno Bersatu, we are formerly Amno Adon and Amno Parliamentarian. We want to join PPBM and Pakatan Harapan. We, we never liked Najib actually. <laughs> Did you see that big flag in front of the road? Actually, it was me who put it there. I said, hey, that was my man who put it there. I still remember, I instructed him to put it there in front of Ketua Cawangan Amno or Ketua Pemudo Amno, just to 
you know, bring Ock and Shaw and, and then, you know, those kind of things. Right? And then everybody started to take claim. You know what I did? Although I'm a staunch UMNO member, but I was the one who keep campaigning for you. <laughs> okay. So I still remember vividly how he chased me out from the village. <laughs> you know, but why all this ha happened? Because unfortunately, I would say, Malaysian community in general, or maybe the rural folks in general, to be more specific, I hate to use this word, but Malay community in general has been spoiled by Amno culture and Barisan culture. The renting culture, the culture of dependency on party and not on themselves. So it's going to be a five hard years for me to educate my constituents, but I believe in impossible. And I'm not going to do it alone. I'm going to bring in Sunway College with me. Because my daughter is one of the students here, and I believe Sunway College students, they can do impossible. Just like any other people in, in a part of the world. So, you know, my brother Chin Tong and one side full of him talk about uh, parliament, uh, sorry, check and balance. Yes, but check and balance really require a lot of things. Some of them have been addressed in our Buku Harapan, in our uh, manifesto book, and some of those have been talk of the towns but have not, have not been implemented yet. I believe in ideals, but you know, ideals need to be translated into reality. Check and balance, I believe, not only comes with institutional reform, but also from the people themselves. So, every stakeholder must put this new government accountable. They must play their role. Yes, we have a new government. Yes, we have left the old regime, but this new regime is infallible. Uh, sorry, it's not infallible. It's not infallible. We must put them, put us, sorry, still have this opposition mindset. <laughs> Although I'm only two, year, two months old in politics, but, you know, I've been living all these years as opposition, being banned from, you know, going here and there, still carrying that opposition mindset. And, and we need you guys to put us in account, so we should know that we are being monitored by Malaysians. I would suggest four major reforms I would like to see, I would like to work on. Number one is parliamentary reforms. One has mentioned about it, Chin Tong has mentioned about it, but you know, what I would love to see, not only in parliament, but also at state assembly level, is the shadow cabinet to ensure check and balance. I would, I would love to see the kind of what we have in the UK, in Westminster, where you not only have a shadow prime minister, but shadow ministers to put us accountable. Not only that, in, at state assembly level, we need that kind of thing. We need shadow exco. If they have enough members, I don't think, I don't think police have enough member for shadow. And I don't think Kelantan and Trangano would have enough shadow. Yeah, even one or two shadow, one or two shades is enough. But to put the government in, 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 uh, in check and balance. That is where, when I was contacted by all those AMNO, you know, politicians, I told them, please remain an AMNO. Please be loyal to your party. You know, despite whatever you have in your mind, but, you know, please be loyal to your party because you need to reform your party. We need a strong opposition. <laughs> the, the, the same thing we should convey to Grakan, MIC, MMCA, and the rest of Barisan, you know, components remain in your party. Be loyal to your party, but start a new culture. Start to make a new coming of your party. Because I believe Pakatan Harapan need a strong opposition to watch them. If we are left without any strong opposition camp without any shadow cabinet or not, I believe in the coming years we might be as worse as Parisian National. So, 
You know, it's just amazing. We are only a bunch of former oppositions. No? Okay. Plus, few former AMNO ministers and AMNO politicians. That makes things worse. <laughs> so, we do need your help and Barisan National's help in that. And not only that, it's not only the politicians, we also need the help from civil societies. Just like one Saiful said earlier that civil society sh should maintain independence as pressure groups, as watchdogs, and whatnot. But you know, sometimes power lures people. You know, it's, 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 not a, it's not a secret when, you know, we were approached by certain civil society individuals who started imagining that, okay, we are going to become the new SPRM or the new EC chair, you know, those kind of things. I said, remind your place. <laughs> you know, if you become the new agencies, heads of agencies and whatnot, so who will take the role of the institutions that you used to play? I mean, what brought BM da uh, Barisan National down is not only Pakatan Harapan. It was also a continuous, relentless effort of civil society actors. A lot of applause for them. <laughs> but one thing, in order to enhance the role of civil society to make them more effective, as part of our promises, we need to abolish all draconian laws. Without abolishing all this fake news and Akta Hasutan and whatnot, by no means they could play an effective role for reform and put the new government into check and balance. And not only that, the third fundamental reform that we should do is to enhance more or to expand more rooms for freedom. Freedom of expression. Freedom of responsible and professional journalism and media, which is what we need in this country. So I still remember when we, we were joking then, after the announcement of the new prime minister and the new government, somebody approached our friends from Malaysia Kini and said, OK, Malaysia Kini should replace Banama <laughs> after this. So I told them, no, 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 I would like Malaysia Kini to remain as Malaysia Kini and Banama remain as Banama. But what we can do is we give freedom to all these Utusan Malaysia, TV3, Banama, Malaysia, Kini, to support whichever party they want to support. But they must abide professionalism and responsibility. And for that, we need a council like we have in the UK. What we call it? One? The press council. Let them watch over themselves. And this is possible. We are going to do that. We're going to do that soon. And we also need to enhance academic freedom. I was amongst, I was among the victims of the non-academic freedom under the rule of the previous regime. It was the emperor, no, sorry, there was no emperor. <laughs> Star Wars. Anyway, I cannot hide it, I always spell it out. Anyway, so, you know, I was among the victims of, of, of this non-freedom in academia. So I think that would be my pledge to my academia fellows. I will strive for academic freedom for you guys. That is why the other day I was telling our top leaders, please give me the honor to moot the law to abolish our coup. And the, uh, what were they, uh, ACTA University College University. What is in English? The University Act. The University Act. So I asked them, please give me the order, uh, the, the, the honor to move it in Parliament to abolish that draconian act. <laughs> I hope Chin Tong will pass it to the top leadership because I feel that would be meaningful for me as a person who suffered a lot from all these stupid things. And not only that, I would love to see Malaysia where we have a lot of unions, student unions, labor unions, so we could functioning in a very more meaningful way to reform the society. Reform is not only 
on the shoulder of Pakatan Harapan, the real reform should come from the people. And apart, apart from all those institutional reform, I believe that Pakatan Harapan MPs themselves and also the Adons, they should push for the reform in their own constituency. You know, sometimes people look down at rural constituents. They say that, okay, they are the safe deficit for BN whatnot. Believe me, I don't think so. I don't think so. Some people said, okay, they cannot think about other things because they live dependently, heavily depending on the government and whatnot, the renting culture. But, you know, having the opportunity to meet with the people knocking their doors, you can see from the tan skin that I am having, I believe that they are ready for change and we can develop their mind into world-class mentality. But it needs extra effort from the MPs themselves from the adults themselves. If they keep continue, continuing the culture, the renting culture that been flourish under the regime of BN, under BN regime, rural folks cannot go anywhere. That is why, I mean, at least on my side, I give my pledge to my constituent that I'll continue to educate them on good governance and self-determination and independency. I believe that we need to empower every single individual of Malaysians, regardless where they're from, what race they are, what religion they are, whether they be Muputra or not, everybody should be independent, everybody should be empowered. At least on my side, what I did is, I'm developing at the moment a smart city application. A smart city application because, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting, you go to any Felda, any rural areas, you could see people with smartphones. WhatsApp and Facebook are their two main lifeline. Without these two applications, they will die. <laughs> Just like any other citizen of Malaysia. So please make full use of it. To my fellow MPs, please educate your people to make full use of your smartphone. And number two, I also introducing the town hall session with my constituents to discuss any issues concerning the people. And you know what we are going to introduce to is annual report card to our constituents to let them know what we have done, what we are planning to do, when, and what we have not done yet. And we open the door for them to criticize us, just like we used to criticize the previous regime a lot. And you know, sometimes being a new politician, I'm not successful yet. I only won the election, but I'm just, I'm only two months old in politics. They, they are the real successful politicians. But I'm trying to be a successful politician in this coming days.